like the Vestal is going to immediately be targeted by your opponent because heal three is potentially a very powerful thing to have. Now, what's going to happen is you play this card for four. It has one health. Uh, you put it around creatures like uh, you want it to heal your Holy Praetorian. You want it to heal your two wolf marksmen on either side. So you'll have it set up in a row where all four of them are next to each other so you can maximize and heal nine total points of damage per turn, which sounds pretty awesome. Until your opponent sends out a fireball on top of your uh, Vestal here, and it kills all of these uh, three units that were bordering you. Now you're left with a Vestal with two health, it can't heal itself, and it only has one damage. And so many times you're going to be sitting there like, yeah, I need to get my creatures all clustered up to get healed. And then the AoE spells hit you and you slowly cry as you've lost your entire board presence. And I speak from experience because Sanctuary decks rely on uh, what's called Honor. And Honor lets you buff all adjacent creatures' damage and retaliation by one. So the goal of a Sanctuary deck is to basically have all of your creatures adjacent. And it just gets shredded by anyone with water or fire magic, because they have those great AoE spells. But uh, we'll get back to this one. Uh, the, the rest of these creatures... Um, oh, that's not the right one. It's this one. Okay. So, uh, Warrior Seraph... Uh, it's the three damage. Uh, th this is a playable card. Uh, the three damage is nice to have because not very many cards in Haven have three damage. But regenerate two is not so great, and uh, it's a little bit expensive for what it does. It only has one retaliation and five health. So I think there are also better cards out there as well. But if that's what you have, you make it work. Uh, it it's definitely playable. Um, yeah, Sunriders and Radiant Glories are both good. They're very good cards. They're in a lot of top decks. You should include them. Uh, same with the Loyal Griffin. These three cards are like the trusty three reliable commons that Haven has. Uh, Tithe Collector. This is a good card. Uh, it helps you get started off early if you draw one in your starting hand. And obviously you get two chances at it with a, a mulligan. So a lot of players will mulligan until they get a Tithe Collector. Because it means that um, on their third turn they can play or on their second turn they can play a three cost creature like a Radiant Glory which is a very very strong start. Um, Holy Praetorians are good they're not included in every deck ever but the melee guard two at four health this guy will stay around for a long time and drive your opponents mad so definitely include Holy Praetorians if you have them and you're going for this style of deck. Um, these guys are included less often, the Elite Squire. They only have three health, unfortunately. Uh, Ranged Guard 2 is nice, although you have to acknowledge that um, it seems like most decks lean on the melee side of things, so the Holy Praetorian is slightly more valuable. Also, that one extra health makes a difference. Uh, Expert Marksman, it's a good card. It's a good common. Uh, it gives him some nice uh, low-cost clump here. It's a good number of low cost. Uh, we have uh, 11, 2 or lower. I think that's a very good number. I think that's about average. You usually want about 11 cards that are 2 or lower as far as creatures go. Um, again, uh, we only have 8, 3 cost. Uh, I guess 10 if you include POW. Although generally you don't play POW right when you get to turn 3. So I consider this only 8 uh, turn 3 cards, and I'd rather have uh, 10 or 12 if possible. So maybe these two Angels of Mercy or these two Warrior Seraphs could turn into uh, something that's 3 or maybe even 2 cost. Like ideally if you could have two Wolf Captains you would replace your two Warrior Seraphs and then you'd be great. And awesome. Alright, and then we look at these spells here. We have uh, Cyclones, Lightning Bolts, Blesses, uh, three sunbursts, two lightning strikes, and resurrection. So, um, again, bless is fine. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly go over bless now, I guess. Um, the reason I hesitate to say bless is a good card 
uh, is because it's very situational and the only time it's good is if you're playing an opponent who does not have good removal abilities and guessing that someone doesn't have good removal is generally a losing bet because there's so many ways to remove a creature so let's say for instance you get your griffin marksman up you give him bless he does his turn of five damage on an opponent and you kill that creature and now this guy is set up to just be dealing five damage plus a melee creature in front of him all game long well someone's gonna have soul reaver or forbidden flame or something and instead of just losing this four cost marksman which was already a good card you're losing a, s a total of seven cost with just one spell so you're making his soul reaver which would have targeted this anyways almost twice as effective because he's getting rid of two of your cards instead of just one so that's why i would generally try to avoid bless if you can although it does still have a place sometime and it can uh, do some good things. As someone mentioned, you can bless uh, the Pow Death Seeker to deal an extra 2 damage, and that has some good combo potential to deal that extra 5 or even 7 damage if you could get both blesses on one guy. And, and that's a valid point. But it's generally not something you would build a deck around either. Lightning Bolt, I still like as an addition to this deck because it provides that extra little pump of damage that the creatures don't have. Uh, Cyclone, I still don't like that much. Um, I know when I first started, I was playing Cassandra. I used Cyclone all the time. It's, in theory, a great spell. I was sold on it for so long, and then uh, I realized I just was losing games, and this card, to me, is a slight waste. Um, unless you're really coming across a lot of enemy creature decks and their creatures are out creature controlling you, uh, this this cyclone is not that useful to me. It could easily be two more lightning strikes and a word of light, if you had them, of course. Now, these are cards you need to get. Uh, you want to know my elo? Uh, right now, I think it's only like 12-something. Hey, I got my daily rewards. Yeah, I'm only at 12-19. Uh, I was up to like 1400 one time earlier and then started experimenting with academy stuff and I don't know what I'm doing there so I think I was down to about a thousand elo yesterday so uh, my elo moves around a lot I'm just too impatient to stick with one deck and try to make it work but back on topic here uh, cleansing light I think this is a great addition to have just one cleansing light here if someone happens to draw their one Might of Nature in their deck, Might of Nature can completely crush this deck right here. Because the opponent plays melee creatures, you don't have the damage to, to deal with it. So Cleansing Light, just get rid of that. I think that's a good card. I, I probably wouldn't include more than two if I were to include them, though. Probably just one or two. Uh, obviously, Lightning Strikes, I've already talked about. They're a great card. Now, Resurrection is a very fun card. Uh, five cost, it only requires three and three. So this deck, uh, looking fundamentally, is uh, four might and four magic. Uh, we consider this a one, f one destiny, although it has two. The destiny is not really important because all we have are gold piles. So having four might and four magic, that's perfect. That's the perfect number. You only have to level six times, and then you can start drawing cards. And Resurrection, though. This card is great in certain circumstances. This lets you take a creature from your graveyard and deploy it for free. Now, the time when I think this card would be great is when you have a really, really amazing or expensive creature that's a complete game changer. So, for instance, if you're playing with, and I'm not recommending this, but if you're playing with the six-cost Haven creatures that uh, can deal decent damage, then you might want to play Resurrection if it dies, pull it out of the graveyard, deploy it for free. Now, this deck, I'm not sure what this five-cost would really gain by pulling one of these creatures out. None of these creatures is going to be a game-breaker. Um... I guess I could see maybe if you had played a POW and you needed three more damage, you could resurrect the POW. 
Th I think that would be the only real effective use of this card. And even then, instead of having this card, you could replace it with another POW. So instead of having to do that and paying two more, you would just have it. Obviously, you would need another POW, and I realize you probably don't have one, and I'm sorry. But, yeah, Re Resurrection is not cost-effective, in my opinion, with these creatures that Haven has. If this card was available for other decks, like if you're playing a Zardok deck, for instance, and most Zardoks would never include this card, but if for some reason a Zardok wanted a heavy creature with some spells and he has these epic creatures he can play, then Resurrection might be a good idea. But in this deck, I'm not quite sold on it. But overall, I think this is a great improvement. Orems, I think uh, focusing on these two things should make your life a lot easier. Um, yeah, a couple cards you can replace as you get better things. Uh, I guess I can look at your events, too. That's a good idea. Um, you have one week of taxes. Week of taxes is a great event, um, especially if you don't have any fortunes. Only having two there, that's not really going to be impacted, especially since you only have one week of taxes. Celebrations. This is normally a card that is used by control decks. Uh, so this will be something like a Nergal poke deck or... Uh, someone who doesn't care if you draw cards because them drawing cards will help them set up a combo. Uh, this card is not necessarily the most effective for this here. Um, the reason it might see more use... Ac actually, I don't know. I, I think it's just not uh, a, a really uh, complimentary event to have. It's never bad because it can let you draw when you need to, but it also gives your opponent a card. So, not necessarily the best, I would say. I, I would prefer to have something like, um, I think it's a Market of Shadows, right, where you deal two damage. Yeah, deal, deal one damage to your hero, draw a card, it costs two. So this lets you, you know, sacrifice one damage, not a big deal, costs you the same as a celebrations and it lets you draw a card and it does not let your enemy draw a card. This is something I would have instead of celebrations if you in fact have that card which you know as we're saying a lot of the new players don't have all these cards so okay and I can no longer open my other window there it is what's up chronic how you doing man what's up Paul yeah, Paul's right. If you have a nail, which is the new uh, epic creature, Resurrection would then be useful, because a nail is a game-changing creature. Good call. Alright, and... Uh, let's see. Alright, so we've looked at some of these decks, and a lot of them, I think... Uh, I, I, actually, I'm pretty sure you could play all of them and get up to a thousand elo, except... Orem's Chant, I can see why you had a lot of trouble with this one. Because there are too many things going on, it's probably a bit harder to play. But, um, I still think you could probably get a thousand elo with those decks. Now, I want to look up, um, and I'll just show you guys this thread real quick. Uh, there's a thread on the official forums. Uh, it is the decklist by tier thread. Here it is. And here you can see all of what is sort of considered by top players to be the top decks in the game. And you can see Cassandra right up here uh, by Pwn Points. Uh, he's a good player, like great player. He made this deck, got it a tier one. And it's just simple and effective. Now, what you see here is obviously he has all the cards he needs at his disposal. So he has four Wolf Captains. Uh, he has a nail. He has two Crusader Treasurers. These are new cards. Uh, Crusader Watchmen are also new cards. Soothsayer are new cards. And he has the POW, which everyone always wants. So his creatures here, uh, some of the best creatures, actually probably the best creatures you could have in your Haven deck. And four Tithe Collectors, of course. So he's really hoping to get a Tithe Collector, uh, combo it with a Crusader Treasurer, get these guys out. And then how his deck works is through fortunes. 
So he has things like prison and 